Okay. Uh, I'm here, Pete Thomas. Let's get, go ahead, Kelly, and go down the line. Hi, Kelly Shiraz here. Hi, Holly Lankowski here. Carolyn Ness here. Okay. Well, we have a quorum. So I would expect Diane just to dial in. Um, I was going to say, I have a telephone around somewhere. I could just give her a buzz. Um, well, let's go through the... Um, so I'm going to call this to order. Uh, are there any other items uh, that somebody wants to put on the agenda for today that aren't on here already or that we can't subsume under one of the... Um, and the items. No, I think uh, my items fit under one of the things we have. Okay. Um, I have one. I just need to bring you up to date on the cake. Uh, but that can be new business. And Carol, did the selectmen have? Um, any uh, action on the um, logo? Uh, no, I mean, we're fine with whatever. I, I mean, if if the people want to use the logo, it's fine. This is, you know, we do want to keep control over it, but I, we don't have any problem with whoever wants to use it for the celebration. Okay, so who are, I would, who are we talking about using it? So there's a guy that one emailed wants to like put it the logo on some woodwork that he's making. But I'm not clear on what he wants. I didn't ask him what he's planning to do with the woodwork. Um, I guess, you know, like from my organization, we have people sign some sort of release that they won't alter the logo and things like that. Um, so I don't know if that's something. It's a pretty simple logo though. So I. It doesn't take much. <laughs> They'll put hot pink in the mountains and. <laughs> Well, I mean, we can have a release, but oh, one more thing to go mm -hmm. through the lawyers yeah. months. Oh my maybe, gosh. Maybe the thing to do, Kelly, is ask him what it's for. Okay. Uh, I mean, one of the things, it was a chest, I think he was talking about, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a large piece of furniture, I know that. Okay, well, I was wondering that, that whether somebody was cooking up a chest for a... Uh, What do you call the the bury it in the ground and all of a sudden and dig it up in a hundred years or whatever? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we got we got to be careful in case someone does something really awful. But honestly, if somebody's going to do something that's going to be part of the celebration, we don't we have no no problems whatsoever. So, Kelly, if you can just you know, get a, a, a kind of a feel for the person. If the person's going to do something legitimate, don't worry about it. Um, I just hate to have, you know, go through this whole thing where we're going to have to have the lawyers write up something for a release. And then, God, it will go through town, our town administrator for at least two months or three. I, I'm, I'm inclined to, I mean, I agree with you. I think it just, uh, it's a precaution, I guess, finding out what it's for, we can pretty much tell, I mean, he could be making something for a fundraiser, which would be perfect. Yeah, yeah. if he wants to do something for the Chinese auction or, you know, some yeah, event. I mean, whatever, or, so yeah. check um, it out. If, it, if it's really not outrageous, you know, we'll, I, I don't think there's a problem. But if, but if it's for personal profit to just sell stuff, then that's different. Yeah, that was my one of my concerns. But well, ask ask him, and if it's that, we'll. He's got to yeah. make the, he's got to make the furniture first. So uh, putting the logo on is going to be a last step. So I don't mm -hmm. think all that anxious. But okay. if you can check it out. That'd be great. Sure. All right. So I won't we we won't need that. Uh, we we've already dealt with that. All right. So no new items except for the cake. Uh, Diane, you're here, so I'll check you in. You're muted, Diane. 
Yep, just just say you're here. You're muted. <laughs> okay. I'm here. Okay. Have you, have hey, you, we saw your hand. We saw your hand. <laughs> uh, have you approved the minutes? No, no we haven't, haven't gotten, gotten there, there yet. yet. Oh, um, before you do, what's the date of the town special town meeting? I've got written 17 in one place and 24 in another. 24. 24. 24 is it okay 24. 17 is our next steering committee that's what that number is okay thank you <laughs> so uh and let's see if did i catch that right yeah i got it in red on the minutes from before okay uh well let's um uh, make motion somebody make a motion to approve the minutes i make a motion to approve the minutes with the um clear the amendment right. to clarify that's the fine. date I second. So what, which which are we uh, clarifying? The town meeting is the twenty fourth, and our next meeting uh, in October is the seventeenth. Okay, so I got the seventeenth is on the last page. Yeah. Where's the date for October for the twenty fourth? Yeah, that was my my confusion. <clears throat> and just wanted I to. I think it looks the seventeenth. Why, why we couldn't do the 24th? I think that's probably what you wanted to know, Diane. Yeah, I, I must have not added a little addendum to the date and okay. just assumed it was the town meeting, yeah. So yeah. there's, there's yeah. nothing in in the minutes that need to change then? No, no. Uh, okay, any other uh, additions, deletions, changes? Holly? No, <laughs> no. Oh, no. I got it. I got no, away from it this month. It's all good. <laughs> all right. All those in favor. Uh, Hi, Holly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Diane. Hi, Peter. Okay. All right. The next one uh, is an update on the pictorial postmark. Yeah, I just don't know. Zenmate collected those. I uh, heard from several people that they submitted them. The last time um, we were having our parade meeting where the mailboxes are, um, there wasn't anything in that mailbox. So I don't know if they're getting put there or elsewhere. Because Is we that, do have a mailbox in that room. I'm, can I go just go ask and collect them? I just don't know where else they would be. So certainly you could go in that room and spot the mailbox and it's okay. either the names on the top or bottom, but you'll see. Um, okay. There, there are some items sitting in there. Actually, Peter, I think there's some newspapers that somebody might've left for you. Well, okay. That's, that's in there as well. Um, but the last time we met, for the parade, which was the 12th of September, there were not any envelopes in there for the pictorial postmark. Yeah, from what I understand that they were all very last minute. Um, okay. So they were classmates of my daughters and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, so if they're not there, then I would say probably go um, in in um, the select, I would say the selectman's office, Carolyn, and Okay. You're muted. How how are we doing with um the entries? Did we get a few? Well, we, we don't, don't know. I haven't. We don't know where they are. I just have my daughters right now, but I've heard from others that they've submitted them, and I just wondered where maybe those landed. But then I, you know, should we get together again? I guess that is my next question to review them. How are we doing that? Well, we want to make sure that we have at least some for South Deerfield and some for Old Deerfield. And um, we might want to consider extending it if we don't have truly very many. Okay. Uh, but that's not to say that if we have like five or six, I'm okay. Five or six people were really interested and they deserve to be. Yeah. Um, I was at um, curriculum night and I had heard a couple of people saying their kids submitted them. I know my kid did. So I feel like maybe we have enough to good review uh excuse me does the art is the art teacher involved and is she perhaps collecting them no this is no. separate 
this is separate. Uh, it, Although they announced it in the school, though. Um. Yeah. You know what? I'll track it down the next couple days. Um. I I have to go into the town hall tomorrow and Wednesday. So, or maybe Alex. Alex, is there is there any place in the town hall where they got dropped off? Maybe in the selectman's office or at the town clerk's office. Could you could you just look around tomorrow? in the town hall, just ask the town clerk if somebody dropped them off in the mailbox out front. Yep. Uh, yep. And see if they're just floating around the selectman's office somewhere. Sure. Or Pat might have picked them up. Somebody is collecting them because I don't know. It sounds like Kelly that there was maybe like five yeah. or six at least. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to gather them and let you know if there's enough between the two sites and then we can go from there. Yeah. If we that have five good. or six, I'm fine. Yeah. I just want to make sure we have more than like one or two. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alex, and, we have, and we have to have some for South Deerfield as well as Old Deerfield. Right. Um, if Alex, if you are able to spot any, could you maybe just circle back with Kelly and that way she could pick them up? Yep. Thank yeah, you. I can do that. Thank you very much, Alex. I'm not really sure where, they're, where they might have ended up. Um, I don't know. Good Perhaps question. what we can do is, Kelly, if when, when you get them, um, if you can just send us all an email saying, you know, I found five, ten, whatever in here. Um, I think we're, if I remember correctly, we need to do something in October by the schedule that was uh, we put out before. So maybe we can just go from there. And have an ad hoc meeting just to look at those somewhere uh, without, you know, rescheduling it. If, Carolyn, if we don't have an agenda that we're going to take any actions on, it's a, I mean, it's a postal review. Do we have to post that kind of a meeting? Um, no, because the task force. I mean, we could just have a little work committee. Well, that's what I'm thinking. And you and you and Holly or whoever, whoever wants to do it, as long as it's um, not the full committee, it's just a you know people looking at it. You can just yeah. get together. Um, I would say that you know if the whoever wants to decide what's going on, this would be the agenda item for the 17th. I can't remember offhand what our timeline was, but. If we make a decision by the 17th, I'm, I'm sure that's plenty of time to get to January. Hey, I think we're I... supposed to announce it by the 16th or something like that, but I'll double check the flyer. Okay. Thank you very much. And yeah. Jay is just joining us. Yo, Jay, hi. Hi, Jay. We were worried about you. You're muted. No. Yeah, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I was having to poke around the town Bolton board because I forgot where the uh, letter was with the address. I found it. I had to dig a bit. So I'm slow, but here I am. Here anyway, you are. Glad Bolton to see board. you. Good to see you, Jay. I just logged you in. We just approved the minutes uh, as read, and uh, we were on the second agenda item, Jay, with a pictorial postmark. Uh, the way we we haven't uh, been able to quite locate the submittals, but Kelly's going to check it and then uh, notify the rest of the board when she finds them. And we'll have a little work group, ad hoc work group to go over them and, and maybe make a selection. Maybe, maybe Kelly, I maybe. should second it anyway. <laughs> Um, Kelly, when you find out, just say that, you know, you have 10, you know, four for Old Deerfield, six for South or whatever, just to let us know, like, that we did get some replies. Mm -hmm. That would be good. All right. Uh, well, 300 and the, the next item up here is the 350th additional funding needs. So... Let me, if you haven't gotten it, let me just uh, read initially from Friends of Deerfield. Um, Friends of Deerfield has raised over $23,000. The funds will be going to the Jubilee and the fireworks. 
fireworks estimated costs are between 30 and 40,000. No way. Okay, we'll talk about that. Okay. We have sold over 25 tickets in addition to the 20 free tickets based on the donation categories. I presume that's for the ball and the, and the dinner. Um, we have met with BC, BBC and Gary will be creating a the Deerfield 250th brew. They will be issuing a limited edition of 2400. They will also be donating kegs to the Jubilee. And then the rest of it, I'm not sure we need to go through it. That's the, uh, the, the uh, dinner and the dance. Um, it's, a, it's a list of the um, menus, side dishes. Um, tickets are, where do I see that? $100 a piece or a couple, 180 or if somebody wants to buy a table's worth of, for eight, that's 720. Uh, I, I had a talk with um, who did I have a talk with? <laughs> oh, um, Stan. Yeah, and it, basically what's happened is that the Deerfield Academy is providing the building and the tables and the chairs, but everything else they have to pay for. There's no, you know, set up staff. There's no kitchen. <laughs> well, there's no, yeah, they said you can't use the kitchen. You can use the shelf space in the kitchen. So the caterer has to do it all off site and bring it in. Uh, if it happens to snow, they got to find somebody to shovel the walks. Um, I mean, it's just, uh, <laughs> this isn't what I was hoping for. And I, I, I No, uh, this is very discouraging. I, unfortunately, I think it's a, just from an outfall of the sewer treatment plant upgrade costs. So mm. there's nothing we can do. There's, it's pretty petty, but it's disappointing. Holly? Um, I, I have a number of things I wanted to bring up related to the Jubilee and um, some associated things, but I thought we would do that during the Friends of Deerfield thing. So are we going to talk about all of that now? Because I can jump in. Well, I was, just, I was just thinking about the funding and this is, that was their statement of what they've come up with to date. Uh, relative to the funding. But I, I think if we're really going to look at this, we're going to need to know some of the other items that we need to find funding for and come up with a, a ballpark figure. Unless somebody's got another way to approach this. Well, I think some of that was to increase what we were wanting for the parade too, correct, Holly? Well, um, we were looking, um, I think with the placeholder that Carolyn said we would have for the October meeting. And I thought this bullet point of additional funding wasn't related to the Friends of Deerfield. It was related to making sure we have the funds we need for whatever may be the responsibility of the town of Deerfield to pay for. Um, and so along that line, um, my notes that I sent along to everybody related to the parade um, flushed out um, conversation that I had with Mike Wesnikevich from Sunderland and John Hannum from uh, Waitley. And they indicated that their overall budget for their towns were 65,000 and 60,000. Sunderland, the higher, Waitley, the lower. Um, and being at 40,000 at the moment with 10,000 that was shifted toward the oral history project, mm -hmm. I think puts us in a deficit of considerable funds. Now reading this message from Jennifer, um, I'm more concerned 
And I think at a minimum, we need to ask for 25,000 at town meeting. Okay, let me, um, I'll bring that to the select board on Wednesday, okay? Now, are there, are there other items that, um, <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Holly. Was there anything about the cake in either of those two? Um, Sunderland and, and Wadley, well, they have the cake. It, was that part of the the cake wrapped into their total budget as well? Do you know? I have no idea everything that wrapped into their budget. All I know is Waitley said their overall budget was sixty thousand. Okay. And and oh. Mike Mike Waz um, said that theirs was sixty five thousand. Okay. And um. So do we want to talk about the information from Friends of Deerfield now because we're kind of in the flow of this or do we want to wait and talk about it under new business? Well, I would, I would like to keep it, whatever we get from Friends of Deerfield, if we, can, if we can look at the part of it for appropriate funds in the future, I'm, um, we'll come back to that. Unless you think it's going to help, I, I don't mind. Uh, one way or the other. I mean, we have the the money. What they what they're stating right now. The the only reason I asked about the cake is I've had some further discussions with Keith Bardwell, and one of the things that needs to happen for the cake is that logo needs to be uh, created so that it can be added on to that globe on the top, and some smaller globe like things along the sides. Um, and then I did talk to the uh, trucking company before uh, about providing the truck and they were willing to do that. Um, but we do need to create a, a, a crushed stone pad out there in front of the fire station. Um, and I'm not sure I, we're either going to dig up Waitley's or we're going to have to find a couple of dump truck loads full of crushed stone. So that's going to be a, a couple of hundred dollars. And I'm sure the logo will be a few hundred dollars. So, uh, and in terms of their est Waitley's estimated cost, uh, they'll give us. Uh, all the light bulbs they have, they've got some, a whole bunch of LED light bulbs, so that's not a cost, but it's about a dollar a day uh, to run it. So I'm thinking, you know, five, six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars could, we may need that to wrap that into uh, a request as well. I, I think we should. I think we should just round it up to fifteen hundred. Say, who knows what the cost of electricity is really going to be? So the dollar a day could morph into five hundred. Say, okay, and then who knows what a couple truckloads of gravel are going to cost? Or we can get weight lease. That would be great. But let's just say we're going to have to do that too. So if we say fifteen hundred, we can probably get labor donated or the highway department can do something but should have have the ability to buy the materials so when you and holly met with the folks at the water is it the water no it's a no, fire, it's a fire department. department yeah i'm i'm sure i'm sure that they would be what we could do is just make a donation to cover the electricity kind of thing i you know is, it will who was the point to, person there? I mean, is uh, it, were it was they... it was the prudential committee that we met with who gave us the okay, and, and um, they know it's got to be plugged in. They said there is access to electricity there. They never said we're going to have to bill you for running it. Uh, so I'm sure we'll probably, like Carolyn said, you know, as as we get closer to it, figure out some in-kind donation that we could do to 
you know, thank them for um, being part of the celebration. And they may say, it's fine. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to speak for them. But at the time, they knew it had to be plugged in. Right. And in terms of the fire department or people on the fire department, had that been talked about in terms of whether they participate in setting the thing up? They indicated they gave us the okay to use the land and that was it. Okay. That was the Prudential Committee. I think if you wanted to reach out to, you know, the fire chief to see if he could put a work crew together to help, yeah. maybe that's a possibility, but we only talked to the Prudential Committee about the permission to put it there. Okay. In terms of, I, I guess I better go out there. One of the things I, I had a meeting with the town resident here uh, the other day. Uh, he used to work for the fire department. And uh, he said, one of the things you might want to think about in terms of the location is that's a state highway. And when those snow plows come through in the wintertime, it better be set back from the road. That's correct. Yeah, yep. so we, yep. we need we, to- We already talked about that with them. Okay. So they're, they're fine with the specific location. They can identify it. There's actually a ditch. There's a ditch there, so- I think we're, yeah, I think we're pretty, the setback is quite wide, so I think we're going to be okay. So okay. it's the highway, the ditch, and then where we'll put it. So we're okay. going to be enough away from the plows. Okay. And for the, for the setup, it, it's going to come in pieces, so they put that out on the ground, but there's plenty of hard top and stuff there to uh, store it until it's put together. Um, we just have to, it, it's a helicopter emergency life flight uh, place. So when we um, have the pieces delivered, we got to make sure they're in one corner of the parking lot so that you still have space for the helicopters in case there's okay. some kind of emergency to land. So that's the only thing you have to worry about, you know, as the delivery, as the pieces start coming. Okay. But someone from the fire department is there all the time. So when we get, when we're making the delivery, we we'll just have to reach out to the fire department and make sure we're working with them. That's all. Yeah. Just to make sure they, maybe they locate, you yeah. know, an area that they want us to put stuff until it's set up. Okay. Yeah. Who's the fire chief? Bill Swayze. Bill Swayze. And is he typically there or not? No, he's not. Um, but they they have two part time or no full time. I think. People I think there's a full time firefighter there during the day. Yeah, I think there is twenty four seven actually or something like that, close okay. to it. All right. Um, I I'm probably going to need a, a work order to get the logos and stuff made. Anybody got an idea of how that process would work, Carolyn? What you, you just, I mean, we're authorized. We have money in the bank. So right. you just go and get it done. And then you take the receipts to um, Brenda, the town accountant, you just submit them to the town hall. Um, and, and, and say that this is, you know, authorized by the steering committee for, you know, use of the 350 funding. Yeah. Okay, Peter. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. They may want some money up front, but I can probably do that. Okay, well, well what you wanna do, you wanna make sure you have the receipt and we have to vote the money, um, you know, authorize spending of, of that account. Unfortunately, when I was talking to them before, they didn't want to give me a price until it was pretty sure when they were going to, you know, when it was going to happen. And we had it, we actually had a logo, which we do now. So um, I guess what I'll try and do is take a trip down to Northampton and go into the office, just sit down with them and, and see if we can. If, if it's if it's little money, you don't need three quotes, 
And um, when I say little money, you know, less than thousand dollars or so, you just you can get that, you know, get that a, um, a an estimate, and then you can if if we vote it as a committee, then um, you're authorized to spend that money, Peter. Okay. Well, the, and the you submit the bill. The 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 uh, what am I trying to say? When I talked to the company, they had already made the logo for Hatfield and for Waitley. They have it in their files. They know what size and stuff is needed. So I suspect if we went out for quotes, it would get kind of lopsided. But let me get down to talk to them and, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. But I just wanted to let us let you know that there will be costs associated with this. Yeah, Molly. Um, so Carolyn, your comment that we have to bring something back and it has to be voted on. Um, if we're saying that there's a budget of roughly $1,500 for the anniversary kick stuff, isn't that enough that Peter has- Oh yeah, no, we voted. We, it, once we vote the 1,500, you know, if we round it up to 1,500 and then vote it, then that that's fine. Peter doesn't have to come back. Okay. And then um, when I talk to, um, and I know Peter, that specific uh, vendor, was it Pacific Printing? Um, in go back in Northampton? Know. I thought that's who you had mentioned. Anyway, um, it would be sensible to use the same vendor um, because they know the size of what they need and what they had done in the past. Um, but I know for parade um, printing, um, I had got the name of Amherst Copy and Design, and we're in the process of finalizing a save the date postcard with them. Um, okay. And that's why I was nervous that we had to vote something, but because oh, no, the no. parade oh, has no. money, we yeah. can go ahead and expense it. We've already we've already voted you money. Okay. That's, you, I, that's what I wanted to be sure. Didn't we do that? I'm pretty we sure. We did, but yeah. um, I just want to make sure we're following the right protocols. And um, Jennifer Gannett had told me for printing needs that we couldn't do just on the copier to go to that company because then they'll just bill the town under the, the line item of the Deerfield 350 parade. So chances uh, are, Peter, the one you need to go to, they might even just build the town. Well, I can I can see. Um, given what we just talked about, would it be worth just voting now up with an upper limit? Say you could, you, we're authorized to go to fifteen hundred dollars, but no more than if it, if it turns out any more than that, I got to come back for another vote. But yeah. Um, if if that's all right with everybody, I yeah, I'll make yeah. that motion. Let's just authorize Peter fifteen hundred dollars to um, have towards the cake. Uh, we're gonna move the move, the setup, whatever needs to be done with the cake. Okay, second it. Get that cake up. Uh, all those in favor? Hi, Holly. Kelly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Diane. I Hi, <laughs> Thank you. Woke you up, huh, Jay? <laughs> All right. Um, that's really the only um, additional money. So we're, Holly, you, rec you suggested 25. So this brings us up to. 265 um, um, uh, I'm, I'm recommending 25,000 right. for the town meeting because right now we have appropriated pretty much 40,000 between the oral history and, and the parade. There's a few dollars left, but it's not worth thinking about, you know, like a couple hundred dollars at this moment. Um, so I thought adding 25,000 more would give us flexibility for 
other things that will come down. And I do want, you know, we're kind of jumping ahead here. There are some other items I want to talk about, um, like post parade activities. Um, but this 1500 that we just approved, I don't think we need to add that to the 25,000. I think it would just be part of it. Okay, so there's that flexibility in the 25, do you think that that would cover that? Say that again? There's, a, there's enough flexibility in the 25,000 to cover the 1500, is that? That would be my opinion. I think so. I, you know, the, the friends of Deerfield are definitely raising money. It's just, they weren't, because of the gala, that was going to be a fundraiser, but it's more of a break even event now. So I think that's where the disappointment was because that was going to be the big, yeah. one of the big kickoff events that they were going to do. But I mean, there's not much we can do about Deerfield. It's very disappointing. Well, I, I mean, there was no attempt to consider doing it elsewhere. Well, there's not really um, the space. The problem is the space at Eagle Brook is much smaller. It can't mm -hmm. hold that many people. There is no other space, Holly, in town that is big enough. Yeah, well, I know that other towns went out of town. I, 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 I know from talking to Stan, well. the, yeah, when I was talking to Stan, they had looked at a number of places outside of town too and just decided they were prohibitive, so. The state is set, the place is set, we're gonna have a good time. No turning back. <laughs> so while, while we're on the subject, cause like we're, we're, we're talking about it, um, I'm disappointed because we had asked for representation from Friends of Deerfield to address the term informal black tie. And now no one's here. So we don't have the ability to converse on that topic. And it still bothers me because it was supposed to be a, a more proper dress event. I'm not going to say tuxedo, but, and then um, I'm bothered because we received a pretty scathing email about um, an issue that we were all um, approached on regarding BBC. And I think it was a simple misunderstanding. It, 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 it was a simple <laughs> misunderstanding. And I think having a conversation versus a scathing email would have been a better way to handle it. And I wanted to address that tonight, but again, we don't have representation here to talk to them directly. And frankly, with that email, I was offended that the Deerfield 350 email wasn't used and all of our personal emails were used for that. But if we were to reply to them, we replied to their um, friends of Deerfield email and not their personal emails. So I just wanna make a statement that I was really offended how that was handled. Um, and I'm bothered by the fact that when we started with this whole branch of Friends of Deerfield, we were told that there, it would be a partnership leading us into the 350. The last I knew, the Jubilee was going to be $50 a person. It's advertised, tickets are being sold, and as the steering committee for this whole year of celebration, we were never told this ahead. We did not have any kind of message from anybody. It just hit the fan. They started selling tickets. And I just don't understand when they are supposed to be a branch of our celebration, why we wouldn't get the courtesy as the steering committee of a message. So I just, I need to say it. I need to be done with it. No one's here, but I want it on record that it's got to work two ways. You can't call us on the carpet for something and not share communication back because I could send a scathing email to them and call them on the carpet for not telling us about all these changes. And frankly, I am hearing a lot of people very upset with the price and not even considering going anymore. 
And I couldn't even react to it because I didn't know. I didn't know the price had changed. Um, so it's it's a problem for me. I just I could follow. Go ahead, Diane. I, I have a I have a both I have a both way on the friends of Deerfield. I myself have been asking to to hear what they're doing, uh, whether or not they're planning any activities. Um, that's sort of why I sort of talked to Gary when Gary and I started talking. I had no idea anything was going on. I'd really like to be in the loop. That would help. And um, the letter did not intimidate intimidate me. It was like I was the one that talked to him. But yes, it was quite an interesting uh, letter that we received. Um, on the other hand, uh, the just out, of here, pardon? Just, just out of curiosity, I never got a letter, so I don't even know what. Um, you did not get the email. Nope. Oh, it was a little bit of evidently somebody in your committee approached somebody and that's not your job. And then we were sort of read the rules and the obligations of the town and the committee and okay. So yeah, I, I read through it. Okay. And, um, it, okay. was, it was a bit wordy, I have to admit. Regardless, um, I'm, I'm undaunted. That's not going to bother me. I would like to see representation. I'd like to know what they're doing. I'd like to get with, together with Pete, like Peter and I, we're trying to do a Founders Day thing. It'd be nice to know what ancillary events are going on. That would, I really would like to see somebody, or at least what I asked in the March, just in, in March or the early spring, just send us a blurb. If you can't be here, just let us know what's going on because it'd be really nice if we knew what was going on. I can totally agree with Holly on that one. Um, on the, here I'm going to the other side. I think the, uh, the Jubilee, enough time had been spent on that area. And when they started finding out the kitchen was unavailable, it became an, oh my goodness, we've already sunk a lot of time into this place. We don't have another option geez, we've got to rent linens, we've got to rent napkins, we've got to rent dishes. I, I think that whole thing just sort of like what we were expecting was not at all what is reality. So I, and I do think perhaps they could have let us know. I think a few of us talked to friends of Deerfield people here and there to know it wasn't rolling smoothly, but it was rolling along. Um, but in the same way, I, I agree with Holly. We just talk to us, please. Let us know what's going on. We're we're supposed to be on the same team. The end. Well, I just felt called on the carpet for us, quote unquote, not following the rules of our committee and what we should do. <laughs> but at the same time, from the start, they said they would keep us updated when there was information to update us, but they haven't. And no, no. I, I, it's a problem for me because how are we gonna do something and properly support something they are quote unquote hosting when we're supposed to be embracing this all together. And frankly, I feel like in, in left field and I mean, we didn't know the menu, we didn't know the price, we, you know, so now all of this is out there and tickets are being sold. And so I feel mm -hmm. like, again, that message to us was a slap on our wrist, but we have no one that we can do that to on that committee. You're muted, Carolyn, if you're talking. I just lost it. I just, <laughs> she's yeah. talking to somebody off camera. Uh, Kelly has uh, her hand I, up. I want yeah. Kelly to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Peter, you were your email was incorrect, so I just forwarded it to you. I just, oh, I um, just forwarded it as well. <laughs> now you got it twice. Ooh, um, and I just well. want to um, agree with Holly. I mean, somebody that's not met very many of the friends of Deerfield, um, I didn't appreciate the hostile underlying tone of the email, especially I would think it should have went directly to Peter to clarify first what was happening I mean that there is no full line of communication in my opinion whatsoever well if if it's all right with you 
I was going to take, I was going to say, if it's all right with you, I will take the letter as I see it and respond to. I already did. And did, and bring in the comment. Well, okay. <laughs> but, I think uh, no one, you know, to be fair though, no one uh, really estimated, people estimated from previous events and the 300th, the Deerfield Academy would be a partner. And the fact that you can't, they're not letting them use dishes, they're not letting them use the kitchen, you have no table linens. I mean, nothing. This is like ridiculous. I mean, it, I I feel like it's pretty petty, but. But but they obviously reneged because that wasn't the case when they were originally approached. I know, I know. That's so petty. I know this is a recorded meeting. I don't want to say too much, but. Um, to be fair to the steering committee, I mean, to the uh, Friends of Deerfield, they, what they started out with and what they ended up with was two different things from Deerfield. I, I can fully appreciate that the Friends of Deerfield ran into a snag. What I don't fully appreciate is I had no clue because they aren't non-communicative with us, but we want to make, they want to make sure we don't step on their toes. So this is where my problem is. I know. And if they had reached out to me, I might have been able to smooth it over a little, whatever. I don't know. I still want to know what they're doing with that wood. <laughs> yeah. So we'll move on. Next subject. Um, well, I, I mean, within, within the same body of their message to us, um, or Jennifer's update to us, because she wasn't going to be on the call, um, they're estimating the um, fireworks at 30 to 40,000. EGADs, where are they doing their fireworks from? Because there's no way, um, Waitley just had theirs. And let me just go to my notes. Um, their fireworks, uh, both Sunderland and Waitley use Southern Maine fireworks. 8,000 in Sunderland a few years back, 10,000 in Waitley. Both received rave reviews. And so I just, again, I don't understand. They said they would take it on, but now they're going to feel that's going to cost 30, 40,000 in their budget. I just don't understand that. Um, did you say it was Southern Maine? Holly? Yeah, what? It was called Southern Maine Fireworks. How long and ago? I, I, I can get the contacts and all that. But again, I really would like somebody to come to one of our meetings so we could really talk. That was uh, last year, Carol, and that, that was Waitley's. That was last year. Yeah, I, I would say that. Wait, Waitley's just took place. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you felt Waitley's was a good, was good I, enough. I, I did not see Waitley's, but it, they received the same good review that Sunderland did. And Sunderland's were fabulous, and theirs cost $8,000. OK. Um, I think that we should use the $10,000 budget then. I mean, I think that's legitimate budget. But, but here's the dilemma. We would work that in to our funding if we need to. Chris Harris sat at the meeting and said to us, we'll take that on. And now they're estimating it's gonna cost 30 to 40,000 to put them on. Maybe That's ridiculous. We, maybe we should just have them talk to us. Push well, it, somebody send them an email. I will we'd like you to address yeah. it. I, I will call Chris um, and have him, or you can reach out to him, Holly, and with your estimates, because well, I think- but, but why can't somebody come to one of these meetings? I mean, they're a whole committee. Why can't one person come and at least listen with the takeaways? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I either, either that, or I'd like to just take them back and let's bump our budget up by 10,000 and ask for 35,000 at town meeting and do them ourselves. What'd you say, Diane? Oh, I said, leave it alone for now. 25 would be fine. I'm hoping I know, but it's not Deerfield, the fireworks. I'm hoping there's going to be more fundraisers coming up, uh, more ticket sales, different things, products. Well, they've already raised 23,000. So yeah. I, I feel like 
covering the fireworks for 10 is not going to be a big deal. But they're estimating it's going to cost them um, 20, excuse me, 30 to 40,000. It's right in their message. Well, then they haven't talked to Southern Maine um, because obviously if in Sunderland fireworks were sufficient and they were in the eight to ten thousand dollar range then i i feel like we could do the same thing for okay relatives. so their 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 message reads they've raised over twenty three thousand. the funds are going to the jubilee and fireworks that's it that's what they're saying so that's what they feel it's covering and the fireworks is estimated 30 to forty thousand. well then they're gonna have an, plenty of money then I would say if we well, I, I, I'm saying I don't, I'm not so sure we can count on money coming to us if that's what they're saying. That's all they can cover at the moment. I'll, I'll call Chris and I'll report back for the October meeting. OK. OK. I, I, I don't. Somebody might have gotten just a number off the top of their head. If if we, I would say Sunderland and Waitley's quotes are legitimate, um, you know they they were quotes and they were paid for, and they were fine fireworks. So we'll you know try to do the same kind of. It might be by twelve thousand by then, but you know whatever, that's still a reasonable amount of money. So I'll talk to Chris and try to come up with a report back on the fireworks for next month. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, have we have we got a consensus at this point of um, the twenty five to go to the select board to recommend any more considerations? Um, I'm a I'm I'm a little concerned in terms of a lot of incidental stuff that's going to come along in terms of you know supplies for this and postcards for that and, and you know whatever um, for other events and that sort of thing. Anybody have a sense of? I'm I'm just wondering if we could if we should ask for thirty and with a kind of reserve of 5,000 for incidental expenses that cumulatively over a year is probably not out of line. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll just, I will talk it over on Wednesday night. I'll advocate for 30. Okay. Everybody in accord with that? I guess you should we vote on it? That's probably a good idea. Then you can then you can blame the steering committee. <laughs> All right. So can, can somebody make Peter, a motion? Yes. Peter, could we hold the vote on that until we get through everything? Because some items I want to talk about later may impact this. All right. Okay, so we'll table it for the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Um all right, the next item on here is the parade work group update. Yes. So um, Kelly and I were talking and um, because our meetings are now really diving in more to action items as we go forward, um, we thought it would be better to just give a summary, um, kind of like minutes from our meetings and things that have been going on. So. Um, this afternoon, maybe around lunchtime today, I sent out our group um, notes from our two parade meetings, as well as some um, meetings with other people uh, where we're gathering information. Uh, right now, Kelly is working on um, the save the date postcard. She's got a, um, a proof um, from the um, printer and just doing some tweaks. So. That's gonna be going out shortly. Um, I met also with um, 
I had a delightful meeting with both Mike Wasnikevich and John Hannum and asked them all the bazillions of questions we had about supplies like porta potties and two way radios and golf carts and potential costs and all that. And they were just really great and informative and shared a lot of good information. Um, they'll help with robo calls. Um, excuse me, they, they recommended um, that we get help with robo calls, which kind of led me to a meeting with the police department. And I met with Adam and talked about things. Um, the one thing Adam is trying to help us do is work with DOT and use the um, DOT parking lot and, and do a what he calls a lane shift. We are on 116, we will shift down to still have two-way traffic, but be able to use kind of like the breakdown lane and part of one lane to go from Mass DOT down to the water department and out to start the parade. So um, he's helping me make the right contact there. Um, he said they will help with robo calls. Um, so again, I don't wanna go through everything, but that's in all of our notes. Um, and let me just see, um, a few people, mentioned being at the fair parade and some of the cool things that were there. So again, we're just kind of brainstorming. And um, I had hoped she was gonna jump on the meeting tonight and maybe she'll still dial in, but um, Zoe Hastings, who's the manager of the um, Hotel Warren um, has joined the parade committee and um, She's got some good energy and has some ideas. So I'm not sure if she's gonna make it on tonight and maybe for another time. Uh, but that, um, I don't know, Kelly, if you have anything else to pitch in on what we've been up to. No, I think you covered the high level stuff. So, so again, because um, we've got action items that are gonna kind of be coming at us as we get moving forward, um, I'm gonna suggest for the parade work group and the history work group, unless there's action items that we do more of just email notes to each other. Um, and I'm gonna to try to do it um, a few days before the meeting. I didn't get it out timely um, today, uh, but for the parade, maybe get it out, you know, three, four days before. So you could look it over. If you have questions, great, otherwise, We'll just talk about action items, if that makes sense. Um, I just want to mention, uh, Holly, I, I had gotten some uh, radios um, from a grant years ago, and they're in the town vault. So they're, you know, they're handheld radios. Oh, so, OK. Um, the, pro the problem is we would have to have to look at the battery packs and, okay. you know, but I think there's like a dozen of them. It was part of our emergency dispensing site, you know, um, when we were doing the big drive-throughs through the industrial park, we literally couldn't see each other. Uh -huh. and, and then we, you know, we had so much trouble with the radios, you know, radio use that um, we just switched to cell phones, but well, uh, we do have, <laughs> if you do want to have radios, we, mm -hmm do have town on radios. Okay, um, Kelly's smiling because we did talk about this at our meeting and um, Adam said um, he would try to help us find some radios um, if they were available. But he said, frankly, if people aren't used to using them, they're a bit of a, a learning curve as far as which buttons and you know taking the button off to listen versus talk. And at our meeting, uh, we felt that maybe having a couple might be a stopgap, but probably do some kind of group text kind of thing for the key people involved and, and use cell phones. So I have to say for emergency dispensing site drills, especially the drive throughs, we've all switched to cell phones because, you know, it's just you only use them once or twice a year and, it, you know, you just forget. And yeah. That, that, that's kind of what Adam was saying. He's like, well, you know, sometimes radios can be a bit more trouble than you think. Yeah. 
I, we just found that if everybody has, you know, we have all our volunteers with their cell phone numbers. So everyone has the list and yeah. they're in a big group text together or everybody has their phone, make sure everyone's phone yeah. is in each yeah. other's phone, then we don't, we've never had any problems. And the cell phones just seem to work better mm -hmm. um, than, you know, the hassle with the radios. Yeah. Yep. But they are available. Just wanted to let you know. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about the parade work group? No, yeah. Go ahead, Diane. Uh, actually, I was reading uh, the comment about the mummers and the cost. Um, perhaps not. It might not be worth it. To spend well, that's that that, money. that's a question we're exploring. Yeah, it might. Not, that's an awful lot of money. Um, there's a there's a lot of stuff around here. I I know you're the one that's reaching out, uh, but there's different artistic groups, walk you know puppet groups, different things. Um, there's I can see spending the money on the Shriners, with what they do. Um, the mummers, you you may not want to spend that much for a pass through <clears throat> at that high price. Yeah, they they were at the Conway parade. And I guess there was rave reviews over them attending. So okay. we're, we're considering. Oh, yeah. yeah. Someone made, made a donation for the mummers though. They wanted the mummers in the parade. So oh, they, okay. made, they covered the cost uh, of it. Uh, that was in Conway. Oh, yeah, in Conway. Oh, oh okay. Uh, they, they made a donation. So someone might feel strongly about them and make a donation again. So, you know. But I'm really excited. Thank you, Kelly and Diane. This, I mean, Holly. Holly. This is just wicked exciting that the parade's coming together. Thank you. All right. Uh, working history group update. Um, I'm not going to go into too much, but the, the I sent you uh, just before the meeting and i don't know if you've gotten it or not but i've arranged for to do two talks uh in february one in northfield for their 350th and the the two beginning talks are going to be both on native americans but i sent you a flyer uh the first one is for northfield is the sokoki um, it's called the, the Sikoki in 1663. And I'm going to do another one. Historic Deerfield has a winter lecture series. So I'm going to do one for them uh, on the Pocumtuck. And I think both of those, the one for Northfield is scheduled for the 17th of uh, February. And um, the other one we, we've got to determine. I was talking to Barb Matthews uh, a few days ago about that. The, um, one of the things that we've been talking about with Northfield too is to see if we can get some kind of joint um, reciprocal project. So this was sort of the first reciprocal kind of project that we could work on. But um, one of the things, Holly, in terms of the parade, is it, uh, do we um, have other towns coming in as participants in, in the parade? They, they well, will be invited. Okay. I just wanted, it, it might be worth, uh, Northfield seems a little far away, but it, we sort of share the same 350th and, and it, if, if you haven't added them in, it might be a good uh, thing just to make a request. Okay. I have to say from a selectman's point of view, the earlier that they receive the invitation, if you guys could send out invitations to surrounding whatever towns you're gonna invite, um, save the date we want to invite you or whatever is really good because I have to say it's really hard to get um, volunteers and I mean it's just one more thing the select board is the one that responds and yeah that's our goal 
Yeah, unless you invite the historical society or something like that, the selectmen end up doing it. And it's like, whoa, one more thing that we have to do. <laughs> so I'm I'm just saying if we're going to buy other towns, we need to give them a, as early a heads up as possible. And so the when Sorry. we reach out to the other towns, Carolyn, should it go to the select boards or otherwise? Well, all the invitations have always come to the select boards. Okay, um, that's what we thought, but. Yeah, I mean, Trevor and I did the one for um, Sunderland and um, we did the one for, I think it was Hat, was it Hatfield? No. No, Hatfield was camp. Uh, we did another one, but then, but but so not Waitley, right? We did not do Waitley's because no one was around. I was out of town, and um, Trevor was uh, had something going on, and and Tim Hilchy was gone. So all three of us were not available, and so we ended up not doing Waitley's at all, which was terrible. So. But there was no one that we could pass it to. I mean, there was no one that was willing. We ever we talked about it at our selectmen's meeting for you know a couple months. So if a select board isn't making the commitment to go and show up, I mean that's how I got in Deerfield's three three hundredth. My dad was a selectman in Berniston, and Berniston sent a float, and I was on the float as a kid. So you know it was. Native Americans attacking a fort or something. I mean, totally not politically appropriate, but um, I remember being on that float. So we, uh, you know, you have to decide which, who you're gonna send it to. If you get no response from the select board, then I would try another groups in town, like the historical society or, you know, even kids or whatever, you know, school groups. Somebody might be interested, but at least to start with a select board as soon as possible. And if you don't get a commitment from them, then, you know, move on. Yeah, we have yeah. A, a long list that Good. we're working through. Yeah, yeah, we, we did all the touching towns, but um, we, we could consider tossing Northfield in as well. Yeah, I think so, because they, they, they seem to want to work with us, right, Peter? I mean, I had a couple outreaches from them originally last year, and we've had a, a couple. That, they've come to our meeting. Yeah. Well, I, I we disagree. had all that technical uh, yeah. problems. Yeah, um, I just had a meeting with them in terms of the oral history program on um, two days ago, and they're they're becoming quite active in terms of their oral history program as well. So down the line, we may be able to, you know, kind of merge um, some of the the interviews and stuff that we're that we're working on. Um, the, the whole thing is to generate excitement because if you generate excitement, then you're going to pull in more people, and and people are going to feel really excited about what's happening. And and we have a whole year of events. I mean, I think ours is much different than some of the other communities that had less celebrations throughout the whole year. So I think our approach hopefully will pull in more people and more people will get excited and be happy and I don't know, be ready to party after all this pandemic stuff. <laughs> well, in terms of the oral history program, uh, I just sent you all a copy of the flyer. Um, hopefully you, you get it. I think it's I think it's really exciting. It's really, I mean, that alone just should be up on our webpage. Um, we we need to, did you send it, Peter, to Alex to put on the webpage? I think he's got a copy already, but I'll send it okay. to him. Sure. Yeah, good. Because um, he'll put it up on the webpage for us. So what I'm, what I'm going to do early on is I'm going to put some of those in the library, in the Polish American Club, the Senior Citizens Club, and the Town Hall. And if we can post them on various web pages, um, then so much the better. Um, I'm running the high dose flu clinic um, down at the senior center on Friday, Peter. I'll run some copies off and I'll um, make sure that they get handed out. 
Uh, we have 88 people signed up, so I'll hand out at least 88 copies. Are those, are those in the, is that in the afternoon? No, um, 9.30 to 1 at the senior, the temporary senior center at the church. And then um, it's uh, 3, we bumped it up to 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 at the elementary school. You can get regular COVID, but we have the new bivariant COVID um, shot. You just need uh, two months from your last uh, COVID shot and you're eligible for it. So um, where do I sign up? Um, on our webpage. Yeah. On webpage is a little uh, disc that, you know, one of those things. What do you call it? You know, you take a picture of. <laughs> uh, QR, a QR code. code. QR code. Yes, QR code. And that will, <laughs> you can sign up. Sorry. Okay. I hate this technology. <laughs> I'm used to just giving people shots, but anyway, um, so the Vax bus people are coming and they're going to, you know, bring the, the bivariant. So I'm, I'm really excited. Well, I'm going to be down at the senior center on Friday as well. I'm supposed to give a talk. Oh, well, you can get your flu shot. Well, that's what I was thinking about. And then in the afternoon, you can go and get your COVID shot on the other side. You can take both. It's, it's two different kinds of shots. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to be giving a talk uh, uh, on doing town histories, your own history, your house, genealogies, that sort of thing, to the seniors. Oh, good. Then we'll be able to um, um, talk to people and make sure that they understand that they can, you know, we'll hand out your flyer. I think that's it's a really good flyer, and hopefully we'll. You know, have some people sign up. Yeah, Alec, Alec had seen it beforehand. He said, "Well, what are you going to do when you get two hundred people signed up?" I said, "Well, it'll be a long haul." <laughs> yeah, but how amazing to have all that yeah, documentation! It would be. You know, it's just I think that's that's great. So, anyway, those are the two things I'm going to report out. That's all. I, I've got some incidental stuff. Oh, one more thing. There's a. I don't know if, how many people know. There's a steam engine museum in Waitley. It's, it's really a wonderful uh, museum in a big uh, barn, but I just happened to go in there uh, a couple of months ago and they've got a steam driven shingle maker and they were just making shingles right there. And so anyway, they're having an open house in 2023 and they're just down the road and I thought that would be an ideal thing to put on our list of events that people might consider going to. It's free. It's um, you just drive in and, and uh, I had a great time. There's probably 40, 50 steam engines in there. Um, I was looking around for the flyer, but I can't seem to see it. I I have no problem with that. I think that's a really great thing to put on our flyer as well. Uh, here, here's the where do I put this thing? Oh, out here. Well, you're looking at it backwards, I guess. But that's oh, it, it's it's good. It, it, it's a whole flyer. So third and fourth of June. Uh, their it's their open house. Wait, the engine museum. So if, I think you, we can if, put that if, on the. If calendar you send too, Kelly too. a picture, she probably yeah. could add it to the calendar. Yeah. I I gave them to Marie, and she hasn't gotten it yet. But we'll we'll get it to you. Um, and it, I don't know if you saw it or not, but I posted something on the Bloody Brook Monument on Bloody Brook Day. Thank you. Uh, it's on the uh, Deerfield Now webpage. There's a page and a half text with some pictures of the, the two monuments taken in 1895. So if, if you haven't seen it, you might check it out. I got about 80, 80 comments coming back. So I knew you people would. have enjoyed. Um, Thanks for posting that, it. Peter. Huh? I, knew, I knew you could do it. I saw <laughs> that date approaching and I knew you could. Yeah, people are interested. Keep yeah. posting those kind of things. You are going to get comment. And hopefully we have people that are still interested by the time we have the, you know, the lectures and stuff like that. It's 
you know, people have an interest. Yeah. And Kelly's been sending me uh, correspondence that's been coming into uh, the steering committee and I've addressed all of those. Um, people cleaning house. I'm cleaning my mother's house and I got all this memorabilia from 1973. What should they do with it? I like, all right, bring it over. Uh, <laughs> so it, uh, nothing critical there, but uh, I am, I, I see, I think I cc'd you some of my responses, Kelly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we can keep that up. That's, that's fine, at least for now. So that'll, that'll do it for the history working group. Um, all right, so update from Friends of Deerfield. Is this where you hop in again? No, post parade activities. I get, so we don't have any, I, um, here's, here's the thing. Um, Holly sent notes. I prepared a couple of notes. Uh, Friends of Deerfield sent us this thing, but I'm thinking Holly, it, is attaching these notes to our steering committee meeting so that it's is a complete package that actually goes in that gets posted. Um, I don't know, Kelly. What do you think? I don't know that all of it's necessary. Yeah, it's probably a little too much, but um. You know, because I mean, it's down to the minutia of the things we're working on, and I don't know that that's really necessary for this committee to have as part of our minutes. I wonder or if part of theirs. I wonder if there's a way to highlight things that I mean, if you send them to me, I mean, I can extract stuff out of this too. If you want to just look at. There's a lot of good information in here, and I, and uh, I think that part part of, part of it is like I shared. We are considering some um, MCs for the you know the review stand, mm -hmm. but we haven't decided. And we got into a like a little complicated thing where somebody talked to somebody whose name was mentioned but we haven't approached people yet. So I think until we have some decision points, having certain things attached to minutes it might get complicated until we're further along. Um, I think so, it's safe to just say whatever high level stuff we talk about at this meeting could just go in the minutes and then the rest is extra. So were the, uh, I, I haven't really had, I just found these about 15 minutes before we had the meeting. Right, I really haven't read through them. I mean, should I just? I'll, I'll, I'll just extract and give you a couple bullets to put in ours. How's right. that? Yeah. I think that works fine. Okay. Um, all right. I just wanted to clarify how we how we might go about this in the future. I mean, I think. I think what I'll do is I'll give you a high level to put in the minutes, and then I'll give the minutia so everybody on this committee knows. Great. Does that sound I, fair, Kelly? Good. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, sounds really good. Okay. So we'll we'll do it that way then. Um, and that way, if people are interested in what the committees, the subcommittees are doing and that sort of thing, then um, they'll have access to that information, at least the high level stuff. Well, and, and also, um, you know, having the more details allows this group, in case you have questions, for us to bring back as well. That's why I want to keep you a little more informed than just high level. Right. No, I, I understand that. And I and I think the other thing that if people are interested in the parade committee and potentially joining, sometimes knowing what's going on in the minutia end of it might be attractive too. I don't know. It's just, it's a thought. Yeah, I, 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 I worry about that if something's taken out of context though, because they weren't at a meeting. And right. so 
um, in any case. Let's you just did, for now leave it at the high level. You, you yeah. did remind me though on one point, which is in the big write-up is, um, Carolyn, we'd like to have a table um, in the hallway um, for the town meeting so we can um, take names of anybody who's interested, but also have a flyer to hand out about volunteer activities for the parade. So does somebody set up a table for us or do we have to schlep one in? No, uh, they have. we can get one from the janitors. Um, Alex, can you just um, have uh, let uh, Casey know that the, the 350th would like a table set up um, outside town meeting. Should, it, should I email just to have it in writing? Yes, yes, but I. It's, okay. but it's important that Alex just let Casey know so that, um, you know, she can have it in her mind when she's talking to the janitors. Okay. Um, it's five, probably be available around 530. Um, okay. okay. Five, five and 530. You know, K Casey and Alex probably will be schlepping stuff over because we got, you know, all the stuff you have to hang out, hand out. The town clerk has to do check in and all that kind of stuff. And we usually have post meetings beforehand um, in case there's anything we have to vote on. So um, there's usually plenty of activity between okay. five. Okay. The meeting isn't itself until seven, but you would want to be there probably after six no later I, I was going to say like 6 15 because i know people start trickling in yeah you want to yeah. catch people as they come in yep yep that, that's at the town hall i mean the high school yes it will be a frontier as far as we know um the reason you know who knows how much COVID is out there who knows you know other factors but right now it's at frontier good ventilation system, highly recommending wearing masks. It should be relatively safe. Okay. Okay. Um, Holly, do you want to pick up your post parade activities then? Yeah. So um, We've had really good dialogue at the parade meetings and a lot of ideas and a lot of energy, but the parade in itself is a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of hands to put things together and many more hands for the few days and day of the parade to have everything in place um, to pull it off, um, you know, be organized, pull it off timely, et cetera. But we don't want it to be a parade in a vacuum. We want it to be a parade that leads to the evening, that leads to people hanging about town. And I think the other communities have sort of branched um, after their parades to food trucks or promoting the local food um, options, um, music leading up to fireworks. Um, that evening. But to have this all kind of mesh nicely together, we're bringing these thoughts to this group, but we can't necessarily tackle all that under the umbrella of parade work group. And so we really need to develop a work group for post parade activities if that's the vision of the steering committee to do something that's more of a day of celebration. Um, I would suggest reaching out to Sue Antonellis because the rec department does a lot of music and summer music programs. And um, I know that they do like old home day kind of stuff in the past. I mean, pre COVID, but, but, but reach out to her for what? So that she could schedule work her rec department events for that day of the parade that would morph into the fireworks. So in other words, you would work with her to um, do make sure that there's scheduled rec department activities for that day. In other words, you know, the barbecue cookout kind of thing or whatever food thing that you can think of. But I know the, the summer music events 
that she, the rec department puts on they could do one that night i mean right like, but that's for an hour and a half i mean we're talking about a stage where we might have three different groups come through and do an hour and a half each because we're talking a block of time from like four to nine o'clock to fill well, with music. Well, I, I would ask Susie to do something special for that day. I mean, she she could do activities. The town sponsors activities already. So she, for that day and the 350th, she could come up with what you have in mind for the whole block of time. So, okay. so you're saying she could plan this basically, like you know, yeah. music, activities, food right. trucks. We could put right. this in Sue's hands. Right. Right. As part of that, you can tell her that I suggested that you reach out to her then and I I leave a message with her on her phone because she has odd hours. I'm not really sure what her hours are, but I will reach out to her as well as you if you could reach out to her mm -hmm. thinking of this day in June. And, you know, we would like the rec department to focus in on activities. And so if you could give her the hours of the parade, when you think people would be shifting over. I mean, mm -hmm. you can talk about what you're doing that day. Mm -hmm. She could come up with activities for the rest of the day until we have fireworks. Fireworks are gonna be at dark nine o'clock. So she has, you know, a lot of time that day to fill in. So let's let's plan something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, because Friends of Deerfield was more the toe in the water on the fireworks, do we know where those might be? I have offered to come up with um, Chris, talk to Chris Harris about, because you have given me the Southern Maine. Yes. Yeah. And I will reach out and, but I'm assuming that it will be in dark at around nine o'clock. Right. Like that. But, but you know would downtown south deerfield yes. area be a good vantage point from where they're gonna uh, shoot we're probably we're gonna have to do it from a town property so it will be somewhere down downtown like like maybe the backside of frontier or something yeah i'm not sure where they were gonna set it you know okay i, I, would, I, I have no idea where the logistics would be but yeah there will be um, a town-owned property somewhere downtown. Okay, um, in the I, village, in the village of South Deerfield, versus, you know. Okay, so where the parade would dispatch at the end, um, then the fireworks would be within walking distance-ish of that area. All activities for that day probably would be in the village area. Okay, uh, you know. Um. I, Okay, so I think Kelly, let's let's try to reach out to Sue first. Yeah, I mean I have Sue's email. I, I talk to her a lot with the kids rec and stuff. So Okay. All right. Oh, so perfect. we can talk offline and reach maybe you could reach out to her and maybe mm -hmm. she could even join us for our next meeting if possible. Um, yeah. you know, because that would be good to pass the baton there. Um I I will say that um Zoe Hastings also was energetic because being a manager of a downtown business, she thought if there was some way that we could maybe even close off part of Elm Street to allow even all of the local food purveyors in town to showcase what they have, and then maybe bring in some food trucks only that would supplement the food that we don't have in our community. And that way, you know, whether it's a, because people obviously would want to have quick turnaround time, but it, any of the businesses, if they got things ready ahead, knowing they might have some heavy traffic, it would be nice to showcase our local businesses. So, okay, we'll see where yeah. we can go with this. Diane? Hopefully the Leary lot is available at the, next year. And uh, my comment when you were talking about contacting Sue, um, what will the Friends of Deerfield be doing at that point? Are they having any involvement or, you know, are they going to be helping to organizing? Will they be doing any fundraising or does anybody know? 
I think that if maybe we could have a conversation, we could get a little more on the same page. I, yeah. I really would like to talk to them. I have so many things yeah. to say. Let's, yeah. I want to coordinate stuff. I want to, yeah. Well, I think it's once again, yeah. I think it's very important to take the parade day and say we're going to have the parade during the day and it's going to shift to, you know, the fireworks at night. And that we have this whole afternoon that we want to fill up. And so to me, it would be a partnership with the Friends of Deerfield, with the Town of Deerfield Rec Department, yeah. a whole bunch of people doing stuff for that, you know, time frame so that it is one whole day of celebration and people can come and go, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and there can but, be multiple things happening so that you have people that will have different, you know, um, opportunities. Yeah. But I, I think what's really important is just to remember that, um, you know, we're, we're going to try really hard to make sure that it is a, you know, a packed day, but, you know, we, we, the Leary lot should be done. We're voting to do the land swap at our town meeting on the 24th. So hopefully that, you know, it can get all done in the, you know, moving forward with contracts and stuff. So, you know, hopefully this will happen. Where does the beer come into all of this, if, if anywhere? Well, the Leary lot is backs up to Berkshire Brew and that's supposed to be, we're supposed to be able to do some kind of beer garden thing that will fall, flow into the Leary lot. The so is, park that on, goes, is that on the parade day too? Um, I'm sure they'll do events. I'm sure Treehouse will have, we can <laughs> Treehouse to do some events, yeah. um, you know, at their location. The park was supposed to be available, but you know, it's tied up in the lawsuit. So who knows when that's going to start. So all of this discussion, <laughs> make sure we get the name of that new member at our meeting, Peter. <laughs> um, so we were talking about this additional funding needs and the town meeting and a figure to put on. And I mean, obviously the rec department, even though they are probably energetic and have good connections and could pull some of the music together, et cetera, et cetera. A budget is a budget is a budget. So if we're gonna have kind of like this big day of celebration, it's beyond the scope of the parade budget. We've got to just make sure we've got enough. And um, I think the couple of bands that are local bands that um, we secured some information from said, um, and Kelly, correct me if I'm misspeaking, a thousand dollars each. Yeah, and that's without the equipment. Without the equipment, and they recommended to have somebody from a sound company. They have contacts set up a sound stage that any rotating bands could use the same equipment, so it doesn't have to be continually set up and take down. Um, and they said that would probably be about a thousand dollars to set that up. Um, so, you know, if we're looking at, you know, uh, say three bands and, and a sound stage, we're probably in the four thousand dollar range for that. Um, and so I'm just I'm simply bringing information here so that we're adequately prepared at town meeting to talk about some of the things that we would be looking for additional funds for. Excuse Diane. me, a thought just came to me. That high number for fireworks makes me wonder if that, that monies for fireworks isn't for other parts that lead up to the fireworks. Not knowing, I mean, we don't know, but it would be nice if that was, they were already, if they were already planning something and just didn't tell us. Yeah. And again, we can't operate, yeah, operate in a vacuum like this. Yeah, this this is so it's sort of awkward for us because uh, we sort sort of is yeah. very polite. Thank you. I'm trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> I'm not always diplomatic. I have to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. We have a next subject. Uh, 
that little jumping jack routine that just happened. I thought my papers got messed up. <laughs> okay, where uh, where are we? I had an agenda. Email from FOD. New business not anticipated. I think we've covered everything except for the funding dollar amount to to vote on. Well, as the, that was kind of the contingency thing that I was thinking would come up, which is why I suggested we go from 25 to 30. Um, it, 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 without no, I mean. Well, don't forget, we need to have finance committee recommendations. So um, we'll, I'll talk in the 25 to $30,000 range. Why don't we just vote for 30,000? as a recommendation going to the select board and let's we'll see what the finance committee says. Um, a lot of times the finance committee, they don't recommend something. You just go to town meeting and you get the town meeting to vote for it. So it doesn't matter. Um, well, I just, you know, as far as talking at town meeting though, Carolyn, I want you to at least know some of the hot button things that now we're approaching and thinking about. Um, and yeah, yeah. And one of them is we're not hearing a lot of solid, we think we're giving you 25,000 from F, uh, Friends of Deerfields. And I'm not trying to commit them, but because we don't quite, we've got to make sure we've got our budget covered. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, like I said, people will understand it, it was a bit disappointing with the whole Jubilee issue or the gala issue. So. We'll, we'll sort that out. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we ask the select board to um, ask for an additional 30,000 at the October 24th town meeting. Second it. All those in favor? Hi, Kelly. Hi, Diane. Jay. Hi, Holly. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Peter. Okay, it's unanimous. All right, I'll bring it Wednesday. Okay, great. Um, so we've pretty much covered the email from FOD. That well, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? So we're. Yep. And, yep. and you were going to send me a copy. I'll. All right, before I decide to do anything, I'll let people know and get some feedback, but I'm that's the kind of stuff that really irks me. So I may just send a letter from the acting chair, but we'll see. Um, we're, we're fine with whatever you want to send, Peter. <laughs> um, Peter, Peter, you can do more than being an acting. You can be an acting out. <laughs> <laughs> an acting out here I can, I can do that too. <laughs> that's a good one jay <laughs> yeah. all right um i think we're through the agenda i think we are all right wow you know for we're doing pretty well 8 15 for a lot of i think we've gone through some pretty complex stuff here so that's great I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Carolyn. All those in favor? Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hey, Dan. <laughs> Carolyn. <Jay. Jay. laughs> All right. Okay, Thanks. we're adjourned, folks. <laughs>